everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm standing on a bridge called the Pig's Bridge, Schweinebrücke, which is located at Biederitz, just to the east of Magdeburg. It's over the Elle River. Don't know if river's the right word. I'll show you what it looks like. More of a stream than a river. And this, believe it or not, and you probably won't believe me, but I'll tell you the story if you hang around long enough. This is the final resting place of Adolf Hitler, or what was left of him. It's where the remains of his ashes were dumped, alongside those of Eva Braun, the Goebbels family, and probably General Krebs as well. So, how did all this come about? I shall tell you more now. Adolf Hitler committed suicide with his wife Eva Braun at around 1530 on the 30th of April 1945. Hitler's adjutant, SS Sturmbannführer Otto Günther, together with Hitler's valet, Heinz Linge, were the first to enter Hitler's room following the suicides. Günther then informed Josef Goebbels, General Hans Krebs and General Wilhelm Burgdorf that Hitler was dead. The bodies were carried up the stairs and through the bunker's emergency exit to the garden behind the Reich Chancery, where they were burned with petrol in a shell crater. Having been left there for a couple of hours to burn, the remains were pushed into a hole dug by two men from the Reich Security Service, Hitler's personal bodyguard, less than one meter away and covered with earth. This photograph shows the alleged hole in which the bodies were buried. Josef Goebbels, as the new Chancellor and Party Minister Bormann, gave General Hans Krebs the task of negotiating a separate peace with the Soviet Union. Krebs spoke Russian and had spent a lot of time in the Soviet Union. Around 2 in the morning of the 1st of May 1945, he set out from the bunker to meet General Vasily Chukov, the Commander-in-Chief of the 8th Soviet Guards Army. He reached Chukov's headquarters at around 3.50 in the morning. It was located in a house in Schellenberg Ring 2 in Berlin Tempelhof. After a while, he was taken to a room with a large number of high-ranking Soviet officers. Whilst attempting to negotiate a ceasefire, he said that Hitler was dead. Chukov said that they already knew this, which of course they didn't. A ceasefire without unconditional surrender was un unacceptable to the Soviets. Before Krebs departed, Chukov asked him what he was going to do and he indicated that he would kill himself, which he did in the bunker around 21.30 that very day. Meanwhile, Stalin was awakened with the news. Two German officers had announced in Berlin that Hitler was dead. The Soviet ruler then apparently said, So he did it, the bastard. Too bad we couldn't get our hands on him alive. Shortly afterwards, the death of Hitler was announced on the German radio. With no further reason to hang around, some of the remaining occupants of the bunker then attempted to break out. In the morning of the 2nd of May 1945, there was an eerie calm over Berlin. Around 9 o'clock in the morning, the chief technician of the underground bunker, Johannes Henschel, who had kept the electricity working, heard some women speaking Russian. They belonged to a medical corps of the Red Army. The leader, who spoke German, immediately asked Henschel where Hitler was. Henschel described the circumstances in which Hitler had committed suicide and how his body and that of Eva Braun was burnt. The immediate interest of these Russian nurses was then in finding the clothes of Eva Braun, which the German engineer then showed them by taking them down to her room. During the day, 
Troops of the 3rd Shock Army of the 1st Belarusian Front occupied the Reich Chancery. They were followed by a unit of Smirsch military intelligence. Their job was to find Hitler's body and identify it. It is true that General Krebs had already reported Hitler's suicide in his negotiations with General Chukov on the night of the 1st of May 1945, and General Wielding had expressly confirmed this again on the morning of the 2nd of May. But the Soviet side remained suspicious. What if the news was wrong and Hitler had been able to escape? In the afternoon, the Smirsch detachment, led by Lieutenant Colonel Ivan Klimenko, began the search of the bunker, including that of the garden. Around 1700, they discovered the half-charred corpses of Joseph and Magda Goebbels near the bunker entrance. Goebbels was recognised by his club foot, party uniform and party call badge. The corpse of Magda Goebbels had a charred golden cigarette case, a gold party badge and a gold brooch. On the 3rd of May 1945, the bodies of the six Goebbels children, five girls and one boy, were found in the bunker of the Reich Chancellery. Vice Admiral Hans Erich Voss, Wilhelm Langer and the garage attendant Karl Schneider identified the corpses. All three confirmed that the gruesome find was the propaganda minister and his family. Voss noticed that Hitler had presented Magda Goebbels with the gold party badge three days before his suicide. Vice Admiral Voss said that he had heard from Hitler's adjutant that the dictator had killed himself and that the body had been burned in the garden of the Reich Chancellery. On the 4th of May 1945, Klimenko's men pulled two bodies of a man and a woman, burned beyond recognition from a bomb crater a few metres from the emergency exit of the bunker. The remains were buried again as nothing seemed to indicate that they were the bodies of Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun, particularly as there was a rumour amongst the Soviet troops that the body of Hitler had already been found. However, the next day, Klimenko had concerns and ordered a platoon leader from Smirsch, Lieutenant Alexei Panasov, to dig up the bodies again. The remains were wrapped in blankets, placed in two ammunition boxes and taken to Surgical Field Hospital No. 496 in berlin Buch in the northeast of the German capital. In the meantime... General Weidling and Hitler's chief pilot, Hans Bauer, had been captured and were subject to detailed interrogation about the fate of the Nazi leaders. The Smirsch commander of the 1st Belarusian Front, Major General Trussov, presented a summary report to the chief of military intelligence, Colonel General Fyodor Kuznetsov. He immediately forwarded the report to Stalin. This also made it clear that Hitler had committed suicide and had previously ordered his body to be cremated. Between the 7th and 9th of May 1945, forensic doctors under Colonel Faust Josefovich Sharansky performed a post-mortem on the bodies of the Goebbels couple and their six children. The cause of death in all cases was cyanide poisoning and splinters of crushed glass ampoule were also found in the oral cavities of the suspected corpses of Hitler and Eva Braun. The investigators learned the name of Hitler's dentist, which was Hugo Blascher, from the chief physician at the Charité's Ear, Nose and Throat Clinic, Professor Karl von Eichen who had operated twice on Hitler's vocal cords. The search for Hugo Blascher, however, was in vain, as he had fled to Obersalzburg in the last days of the war. Instead of him, his dental assistant, Kate Husermann, was found on the 9th of May 1945. She described from memory the characteristic features of Hitler's dental work. This information coincided with the skull which had been found and presumed to be Hitler's. The dental technician Fritz Ektman in turn identified the synthetic resin bridge 
presented as clearly coming from that of Eva Braun. This provided important evidence that the body remains discovered were those of Hitler and his wife. On the 13th of May 1945, SS Rottenfuhrer Harry Mengershausen told the Soviets that he had observed from his guard post how the corpses of Hitler and Eva Braun had been carried outside, doused with petrol and burned. He showed them where the charred corpses had been buried. At the end of May 1945, the Chief of Military Defence of the 1st Belarusian Front, Lieutenant General Alexander Vadis, informed the Chief of the Intelligence Service, Lavrenti Beria, about the results of the investigations. But Stalin was not satisfied with that. In an interview with the American Special Envoy Harry Hopkins on the 26th of May 1945, he suggested that Hitler had been able to flee Berlin with Bormann and was hiding somewhere. Everything must be done to find him. Maybe he escaped to Japan on a submarine. Marshal Zhukov said at a press conference in Berlin on the 9th of June 1945 that nothing definite could be said about Hitler's fate. It is possible that he was flown out of Berlin at the last moment and was in Spain. Even at the Potsdam Conference in July 1945, Stalin stubbornly insisted that Hitler was still alive. All Soviet investigations have revealed no re trace of his remains and no positive evidence of his death, he said. Did the Soviet dictator actually believe in his own version or was he deliberately trying to deceive his Western allies? However, the Soviet game of confusion continued for quite a while. In autumn 1945, Hitler's servant, Linger, his personal adjutant, Güncher, his chief pilot, Bauer, and the telephone operator, Misch, were subject to intensive interrogations by the Russian Secret Service in Moscow. And at the beginning of 1946, the NKVD leadership decided to set up a special commission under the code name Mythos, Myth, to review all the facts about Hitler's suicide, which had come to light so far. Together with their prisoners, those involved in the operation carried out another inspection of the bunker area in Berlin in May 1946. In the bunker, the traces of blood still remaining on the sofa in Hitler's study were carefully examined, and two fragments of a male skull were discovered during a re-excavation in the garden of the Reich Chancellery, one part of which, which had a characteristic bullet wound. It could now be definitely proven what the witnesses from Fit Hitler's circle had repeatedly stated, that the dictator had shot himself. Most likely he had bitten into a cyanide capsule at the same time. Now, let's go back to May 1945. The corpses of the Goebbels family and the remains of Hitler and Eva Braun were packed into wooden boxes after the forensic medical examination and buried in the Berlin Buch area. Possibly due to fears that someone had attempted to dig them up, they were exhumed again and moved with the Smirsch unit that had found them to the Soviet garrison in Finno. However, another inspection was required, so the remains were once more exhumed and this time buried in Ratano. And pine trees were planted on the grave for camouflage. The corpse was dug up for the sixth time in July 1945, brought to Stendhal in a half-rotten state, buried there in a wooden area. In December 1945, the body was exhumed again and taken to Magdeburg. It is suggested that the reason could have been that a Soviet general wanted to pre prevent a reinvestigation by experts because he did not want to accept any evidence for the claim that Hitler shot himself honorably instead of cowardly taking poison. Hitler's body was buried again in Magdeburg and dug up again in January 1946 to be examined again. Then Red Army soldiers buried the remains on a military site at Klausnerstrasse, 
36 in Magdeburg, Sudenberg, and paved over the grave. This is what Klausnerstrasse looks like today. However, by 1970, this area of Magdeburg was due to be handed over to East Germany. This worried KGB boss Yuri Andropov. On the 13th of March 1970, Andropov wrote a top-secret letter to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. The letter was so sensitive that the typist, who already had security clearance to the highest level, only typed part of the letter, missing out crucial words and leaving blank spaces, which Andropov filled in by hand. In February 1946, in the city of Magdeburg, on the site of the military settlement that is now the special department of the KGB, the corpses of Hitler, Eva Braun, Goebbels, his wife and their children, ten corpses in total, were buried. The military settlement mentioned is currently being handed over to the German authorities by the army command for reasons of expediency and in the interest of our troops. In view of the possibility of construction or other earthworks on this site that could lead to a discovery of the grave, I would consider it useful to remove the corpses and burn them to destruction. This measure should be carried out under strict secrecy by the operational group of the Special Department of the KGB in the Third Shock Army of the group of the Soviet Armed Forces in Germany and must be documented accordingly. Brezhnev, Prime Minister Alexei Kosygin and the Chairman of the Supreme Soviet, Nikolai Podgorna, signed the note. Agreed. In the spring of 1970, a couple of Soviet soldiers pitched a tent on the property at Klausenerstrasse 36 in Magdeburg, next to the garage. Secret Service people took up camouflage positions, observation posts in the adjoining houses in which local Germans lived. On the night of the 4th of the 5th of April 1970, five KGB officers climbed into the tent and dug up the earth. They located four ammunition boxes containing the remains. The final report noted that the ammunition boxes contained skulls, bones, ribs, vertebrae, etc. in boxes, those rotted to mud. Corpses were mixed with earth. The degree of destruction is great. In addition to the skeletal remains, there were a few golden teeth. The remains were brought in a Soviet off-road vehicle to the garrison of the 10th Soviet Armored Division in Schönebeck, 11 kilometers from Magdeburg. 20 liters of petrol were poured onto the remains, which were burnt for an hour. To ensure complete destruction, these ashes were mixed with coal ash and crushed. Although the Elbe flows very close to Schönebeck, the ashes were not scattered into the water here. Instead, three soldiers drove around 20 kilometers to Biederitz, to this bridge over the Erle a small tributary of the Elbe. The remains of the Hitler couple and the Goebbels family and possibly also Hans Krebs were dumped into the water from this bridge with the rather distinctive name Schweinbrücke. Why at this bridge? I don't know. Did the Red Army men or their officer know a name or did they want to send the last sign of contempt? The report which was sent to Moscow that very day, did not mention the reason. So, is that the end of Hitler's body? Well, perhaps not. Hugh Trevor Roper, in his bestseller, The Last Days of Hitler, wrote as early as 1947, mentioned that Otto Gunsch is said to have said that Hitler's ashes were placed in a box. Trevor Roper did not say we got this information from, Perhaps it was from Hitler's secretary, Traudl Junger.
who he interviewed in 1945. Traudl Junger repeated the same story on the 7th of August 1946 when she was interviewed in the Garmisch region by an employee of the Counterintelligence Corps, the intelligence service of the US Army. The story later told was that Hitler youth leader Arthur Axman, who had been in the bunker and who had taken the pistol Hitler killed himself with, took the box with Hitler's remains and buried them somewhere in southern Germany. Given the conditions that existed when he fled Berlin, then he cannot have taken all the ashes, just a sample. On the 1st of May 1945, X-Men left the Führer bunker as part of a breakout group which included Martin Bormann, Werner Naumann and SS Dr. Ludwig Stumpfegger. Unlike Bormann and Stumpfegger who were killed in the escape attempt, Axman made it to the Western Allies. He was not captured until December 1945 when he was arrested in Lübeck and that was for attempting to organise a resistance movement. He died on the 24th of October 1996, aged 83, and if he did have Hitler's remains, then they went to the grave with him, although presumably not the same one. Hope you found that interesting. I um, spend a lot of my time traveling around Poland, Germany and Italy in my motorhome doing videos such as this and therefore you might like to subscribe. Thanks for watching.